Hello, in this video, I'm going to be talking about storagenesis. Uh, essentially, I'm going to try to make sense of this uh, metabolic pathway here. Ultimately, all steroids are derived from a cholesterol molecule. And given the expression of different genes for all of these different enzymes here, we ultimately end up with the mineral corticoids. So aldosterone is strongest in humans. We end up with the glucocorticoids here. Cortisol is the strongest in humans, as well as um, the uh, sex steroids, testosterone and estrad estradiol, as well as some other variations of these um, steroid hormones. Uh, so this is what you would usually see. Uh, and I am going to talk about how the adrenal gland completes this process. So uh, in the adrenal gland, um, we are talking about steroidogenesis within the adrenal cortex. Uh, the adrenal cortex is divided into three different zones, the zona glomerulosa, fasciculata, and reticularis. Uh, another video will talk about what happens in the adrenal medulla. And so essentially this entire process, regardless of the zona, uh, begins when cholesterol, either synthesized directly in the cell in the smooth endoplasmic reticulum or taken into the cell via um, receptor-mediated endocytosis. Uh, cholesterol is taken into the mitochondria via STAR, the uh, steroidogenic acute regulatory protein. Uh, cholesterol is then modified by this enzyme right here, the P450SCC or side chain cleavage enzyme. And essentially that's just going to trim off that side chain off of the cholesterol molecule, leaving behind pretty much those uh, overlapping carbon rings. Okay, uh, the result, the product is going to be released from the mitochondria and that product is called pregnenolone. Pregnenolone is further modified to progesterone. Um, as I said, I'm going to simplify this diagram and kind of help, help you to make sense of it. Um, and so some of the enzymes are omitted from this diagram. Okay, so progesterone uh, is going to be used in the three different zones of the adrenal cortex, uh, and ultimately uh, is going to be synthesized into different steroids. And so progesterone uh, in the zona glomerulosa only, so in this most superficial region of the adrenal cortex, is going to be synthesized into the mineral corticoids. And so these ones are going to um, be responsible for balancing minerals within our body. And now there are a couple different steps here, uh, but these are the enzymes that are implicated. Um, one is in the smooth endoplasmic reticulum, one is in the membrane of the mitochondria, and ultimately when both of these enzymes work on their various substrates, they produce ultimately the molecule called corticosterone. Now this has a weak mineral corticoid effect, but the ultimate, um, the strongest uh, hormone in our body to balance minerals um, is synthesized when aldosterone synthase modifies corticosterone to produce aldosterone. Okay, and this is released um, in, under control of the renin angiotensin system. Now in the zona fasciculata and reticularis, the progesterone and also the pregnenolone are going to be converted into different steroids. Um, for the most part, um, we have one type of steroid being produced within the zona fasciculata. Those are the glucocorticoids or more commonly called the stress hormones. Um, and the androgens, right, which have an actual weak androgenic effect, so a masculinizing effect, um, and can be used as precursor molecules for um, the creation of testosterone and estrogen within the gonads. And so there is overlap here. Uh, fasciculata will produce some and androgens, the reticularis will produce some glucocorticoids, but for the most part, um, these molecules are synthesized in the fasciculata, and these molecules are synthesized in the zona reticularis. And so how do we get there? Well, both pregnenolone and progesterone can be used as precursor molecules. Um, the enzyme 17-alpha hydroxylase, which is in the smooth endoplasmic reticulum, 
um, modifies both of these molecules and ultimately produces the 17 alpha metabolite forms. Okay, so the 17 alpha hydroxypregnenolone, for example. And so both of these metabolites, again, of either one of these molecules, uh, can then be modified further. Um, and this is where the process deviates between the or between the uh, production of glucocorticoids and the production of androgens. If a 21 hydroxylase is activated, this is going to produce 11 beta deoxycortisol. And once again, we have 11 beta hydroxylase, which acts on this substrate to ultimately produce cortisol, also called hydrocortisone. Again, this is the strongest um, steroid hormone for humans. Okay. If, on the other hand, this enzyme um, is active and um, modifies uh, either one of these 17 alpha metabolites, essentially uh, that is going to produce DHEA and then ultimately androstenedione. Okay. So again, both of these hormones have a weakly estrogenic effect. In fact, um, in females, about half of the androgens circulating in the blood are actually in this form here, so DHEA and androstenedione combined. Um, in males, on the other hand, the uh, majority of androgens are synthesized within the testes, and they use these as precursor molecules. So again, uh, this has been a very brief summary of steroidogenesis within the adrenal cortex. We see that within the three different zones, mineralocorticoids, glucocorticoids, and weak androgens are produced. Um, depending on where within the adrenal cortex we're looking. Thanks so much for watching.